Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is a lens that came to me in March, almost immediately before Sydney went into quite an extensive and severe four-month-long lockdown because of, well, take a wild guess. And as you may imagine, being trapped inside and being trapped within a very limited local area of range that I was permitted to go out and just for shopping and stuff, basically, made it a bit difficult to actually go out and shoot with a lens in, in, in a way that would make it practical to review it for you. But the lockdowns have now lifted. It is October. I've been free for a couple of weeks now, so I have been going out and shooting with the damn thing, and now I can finally tell you all about it. And to the people, Fun Lens, who sent me this lens early this year, I can only apologize for taking so long to get the review out. It was a little bit beyond my control. I'm sure you understand. So this is the Funleader Cap Lens 18mm f8.0. This particular one is a significant upgrade to a version previously available. So if you've heard of it before, you might not have heard of this specific variant, so pay attention. It is an ultra-wide lens. It is manually focused with a nice old-school uh, focusing lever on the bottom there with soft stops at 45 and 70 and 1 meter and 2 meter and of course hyperfocal distances. There's no aperture control at all and at f8 quite slow by today's standards of course but that's quite deliberately so to encourage what this lens is best at a kind of freewheeling fast and loose street photography kind of aesthetic. There's no electronic components, it is fully manual through and through and weighs believe it or not only 40 grams making it super easy to just have in your gear bag when you're out and about. You don't even have to think, oh, how many lenses should I take? Should I take the big lens, the heavy lens? You can just have this with you all the time, no problem. You can even like leave it on the camera itself and use it as a body cap. Like I said in the opening, the lens design itself has been around since mid last year, but earlier this year they added the M mount version, which pumps things up a bit from the basic fixed focus version that was for the other mounts. And of course, that is the one I'm using here. Although my own main camera is the amazing Lumix S5 here, of course, which has an L mount. Luckily, the M mount and the L mount share the same Leica family tree, and adapting it is super easy with an inexpensive mount adapter, as indeed it will be to many other lenses mounts. That's one of the nice things about the M mount. It does adapt quite nicely across the board for modern cameras. And although most M mount cameras do indeed have an APS-C sized sensor, not all M mount cameras do. So this lens can, and in fact has been designed to work perfectly well with full frame. Now, as you'll see now, as we move across into actual samples, that 18 millimeter focal length on a full frame camera is of course very, very wide indeed. Remarkably, for such an inexpensive and mechanically basic lens, there's very little hint at the kinds of fisheye barrel distortion you'd expect on a lens this simple and this wide and this affordable. You will get some very natural and quite pleasant actually vignetting, especially at closer focal ranges, but far from being a flaw as you might consider it in some fancier lenses, it's absolutely part of the style and charm of this lens in my opinion. You get a low fire look, but it's clean, it's defined, but it's still soft and nearly analog looking. In fact, what fun leaders say on their website on the more basic version of this lens is it's like using a Lomo camera which puts more emphasis on creation rather than optical effect. And this is something I've said over and over and over again throughout the years. Limitations, working with basic lenses, working with toy lenses and stuff like that provokes creativity because you're working around the limitations. But I've used an actual Lomo lens, few of them in fact, both for film and adapted to a variety of digital cameras, and I disagree with Funleader's comparison here. I think the only reason it's even on their website at all is kind of a honey trap for hipster shooters googling around for Lomo stuff, because this lens is a lot better than a Lomo lens is. It's better built by far, which is immediately obvious as soon as you touch the damn thing. It's a full aluminium alloy construction for the body, a decently smooth focus turn with enough resistance to prevent accidental changes, but not so much that you can't easily one finger it. It has clearly higher quality optics than a Lomo lens tends to have, six elements in five groups and multi-coated along the way, which lends to its stylistic look. As you've been seeing, it is soft without being a blurry mess. Details present cleanly and point light sources bloom wonderfully. And rather unexpectedly on a lens of this type, it's remarkably resistant to lens flare. And when it is present, it's subdued, natural, not sort of overpowering, but just enough to give it a look, if you know what I mean. 
Now I shot most of what you're seeing with a pretty flat picture profile, and as you can see, it's a moderately desaturated look. Colors come through clean and consistent, but without a lot of pop. If I was shooting this for my own purposes, instead of a review where I'm trying to give you a natural look at what the lens does, I'd absolutely go for some kind of in-camera filter, punch out that contrast in color a bit, give it a more poppy look. Or, indeed, leave it low contrast in its natural form, but go over to a monochrome situation where it has a nice, gentle look that doesn't actually fall too far short of looking legitimately film-like. But all that said, I don't like it as much in video as I do in stills mode. It's just a bit dull and uninspired somehow in motion. Although at night, when you get that lovely soft bloom to point light sources, which of course are everywhere at nighttime, it pulls some of its charm back for video. All in all, if you're looking for a lens cap style fun times lens, I can recommend the Fun Leader Cap Lens 18mm. It's very nicely built, even comes in a metal tin instead of the hideous vinyl bag you'd expect most of this kind of stuff to arrive in. Its performance is rock solid and extremely consistent. At 179 US smackaroos, it's not nearly as cheap as some other similarly styled body cap lo-fi aesthetic lenses tend to be, but it's also noticeably better built than most of those, and better optical plus the manual focus. Although at f8 it's reasonably limited, you're not going to get tons of bokeh or anything out of this thing, but it is still extremely welcome over the typical fixed focus you see in other examples of this style of lens. It gives you a lot more potential, a lot more control, a lot more flexibility, and a lot more creativity. The choice of end mount is weird to me. Typically I only found these days on the premium priced and extremely status poser targeted Leica camera bodies. I find it hard to believe too many proud Leica owners would stoop to something designed for fun, instead of flexing how much money they have to spend on bodies and overpriced lenses. But the end mount is also quite adaptable to many other modern lens mounts, so it was probably chosen as a friendly common denominator to make it as easy as possible to adapt to other camera systems without going all the way back to something like the M39 or M42 screw mounts. Although, of course, its styling does also echo some of those earlier Leica lenses and indeed many other older style rangefinder lenses, especially with the focus lever down here, which I actually appreciate. It's stylistically pleasant, but without being gimmicky for the sake of gimmicky. It goes for the classic look without compromising any proper functionality. And speaking personally, I have in fact been missing some of my more toy-like lenses since I moved over to the S5 full frame from my other uh, Micro Four Thirds camera bodies. So this lens is a very welcome addition to my gear bag as far as I'm concerned. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this useful, interesting, informative. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above, whose above and beyond support is wonderful. And thank you to the patience of, of, of the fun lens people who sent me this lens for review uh, and then had to wait pretty much half a year for me to get it done. Not my fault, not my fault, but sorry, all the same. Poop happens.